Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Hour of Power 9 a.m. service. So happy to have you with us. If you'd stand with us, please, in the church. So good to see you today. Thanks so much for coming. We love you. We thank God for you and to the many watching online right now as we're bringing God's house to your house. It's an honor to be with you on whatever platform that you might be watching on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or even on the website, faithcitynow.com. We're just happy to be with you. And I believe that this service is ordained by God, not only with our special worship and prayer, but the, with a word from the Lord. How many, wherever you're at, here or watching, Watching, how many could raise a hand and say God is good all the time in your life? He's a good God in the good times and in the tough times. God is good. Yes, he is all of the time. And speaking of prayer, we would absolutely love to get your prayer request. We'd love to hear from you. And in the few minutes after the praise and the worship, I want to get those requests in my hand. And we're going to call on God. We're going to pray because how many know God still does miracles today? Yes, he does. And so to get those requests in, go to Facebook and you can send a message on the comment section. Facebook, the comment section. You can also do the app as well. Faith City Family Church app. Download it on your Apple or Android device, and we can get your request through those two streams right there. Can we put our hands out to one another? We're going to come into agreement that we're going to have a mighty time in the Lord today. I want everybody to repeat this after me nice and loud. Come on, everybody say, in the name of Jesus, nothing is impossible with God. We agree in prayer for a powerful time. People will be saved. Come on, shout it. People will be healed. Lives will be turned around. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we put our hands together? Give the Lord a loud praise right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you for it. Welcome to the 9 a.m. hour of power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. For you are worthy. For you are worthy. Of all the glory. All the glory. That's why we give, Lord. That's why we give. We give your name the praise this morning. Your name the praise. For you alone are worthy. For you are worthy. Yes, Lord.
love you, Lord. Put your hands together. Let's praise him just another minute. The Bible said, clap hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, clap those hands. And while you're clapping your hands, somebody shout. Say God is good. Come on. Come on, do it. I want you to shout. Come on, shout. God is good. 
Come on, can I hear the church? Can I hear you watch? Come on, say, God is good. Oh, we want to do it one more time. God is, God is good. Yes, I know he is. My God is good. Clap your hands and say with me, God is good. I know my God is good in the good times and the bad times. I said my God is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my God is when I didn't know where to turn. Jesus made a way. My God is good. Mm -hmm. Play that song, brother. Somebody getting a blessing right now. I got to think about what he's done for me. He brought me out of the pit. Now I'm free. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. God, we thank you. Your name reweighs. Oh, hallelujah. All right, we're going to get ready to pray. And I want everybody in the church, if you got a prayer request, and you need the Lord to get involved in what's going on in your life, if you would be willing just to slip up your hand right now and say pray for me pray for me pray for my family pray for my kids pray for what's going on in my life because i believe that god's going to work it out in the name of jesus he he's got a turnaround for me somebody shout turn around he he's a turnaround god it, it may look hopeless but he's a turnaround jesus yes he is those of you watching we're going to get ready to pray God has a miracle with your name on it. We're in the rhythm of faith. Oh, thank God. Dana, I just, that feels so right. And I want to ask Brother Harmon, do you have re prayer requests, brother? If you have any, just bring them up at this time. And we're going to call on Jesus for those that have sent in their requests on Facebook and on Faith City Family Church app today. And we're going to pray for you and all of you watching. Brother, thank you so much. Praise God. This says right here, would you pray for Karen, Karen Grandison, praying for continuing blessings on my family and my friends, Sister Kenyatta. Pray for my children, also the Cooper family. Marshall, please pray for pain relief in my knees that have arthritis in both of them. Marshall, God is able. Let the church shout amen. Mom Stella. I'm just out of the hospital, and I'm asking for continued prayer and a financial blessing. Yes, Mom, it's coming. Candy of uh, my mother's leg was amputated. Pray for speedy recovery. Pray for me and my family. We are going through some storms, and my husband just lost his job. My Lord, we're believing for overflow. Somebody shout overflow right now. All people are going through, but Jesus is able. This says, pray for my healing. I'm scheduled uh, for a surgery procedure. Yvonne says, please keep me in prayer. Trina, pray for me and the others that I'm living with right now. Sheila says, I'm thanking God in advance. I believe it's not only going to be a blessing, but an amazing, awesome blessing is on the way for me. Sister Yvette is in service today. She said, Anthony, my husband, that was prayed for last Sunday, he is in remission. Praise God. Oh, give the Lord a prayer. Sister Yvette, would you raise your hand? Where you at? Or where, where's she at? Is she, can you help me? She's over here. Give the Lord a shout right now for Sister Yvette that her husband went into remission. Oh, God is able. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Jacqueline, uh, she says, uh, I want to praise God that the Lord has led me to Faith City Family Church to be my home church. Give her a praise, God. She's thankful. She needed somewhere to go. Brother Harmon, he's going to get ready to come with the anointing oil. But while he's coming, I want us to stretch our hands out to one another. Come on, everybody here and the many that are watching. Those of you that are watching, some of you have been sick in your body. You've been going through the valley of the shadow of death. But to stretch your hand out towards the screen right now. There's no distance 
there's no limit to what God can do. Father, in the name of Jesus, before we get ready to pray over these requests, we stretch our hands out to everybody that's in the church this morning and to the many that are watching online. Now, devil, the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, devil, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Uh, if Sister Wybette's husband can go in remission, I know God has a blessing for everybody else in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord, take on the cancer. Take on the tumor, oh God. Take on the situation that's been going on. Uh, and, Father, we command the devil to loose people in the name of Jesus. Uh, and, devil, you not only let them go, but I'm asking in the name of Jesus, God will give you a season of relief. God will give you a season of breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm praying not only for the healing of the body, but the mind, the soul, the emotions, everything. Somebody shout everything. He's in everything, Jesus. He can give you the whole package. Father, we believe for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout right now. Somebody watching online, that pain is coming out of your body. That's the Lord healing you right now. God is coming into that place where you live, and he's working in your life. Brother Harmon, do you have any more requests there? God bless you. Amen. Give Brother Harmon our, a hand, would you, our outreach director here. Sister Jeanette Austin, she said, I need prayer for good health and for Michelle and for Aunt Joan and for Pat and also for Anita. Dewana Allen, I pray that God will guide me to pass all my fundamental skills at my new job. Amen, Dewana. God is able. Brother Harmon, let's get out the anointing oils. You bring one more here. This says from Mariah, a pray for my nephew, Kevin Graham. He was hit by a car while in his wheelchair. Lord, have mercy. Stretch your hand out right now. God, in the name of Jesus, uh, help this dear man, my goodness, uh, in the wheelchair, hit by a car. God, we pray what the devil meant to kill him and destroy him, that God will turn it around in the name of Jesus right now. And Lord, we stretch our hands out to all these requests with this anointing oil. Brother Harmon and I begin to anoint them right now in the name of God the Father. Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We command sickness to come off of people. Yes, Lord, once again, why that husband goes into remission of cancer after we pray. We pray for miracles just like that in the name of Jesus. Father, we believe in right now the pain is leaving in Jesus' name. And people not only in their body and in their mind and in their spirit, but also in their finances and in their resources are getting the miracles that they need. In Jesus' name we pray. Can the church put your hands together and give God a loud praise? I hope Brother Josh is getting this online. Come on, clap your hands loud. I want those of you watching to hear the saints of God giving a prayer. Come on, you can clap louder than that. I want you to give God a loud praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now in every life here. And the many of you watching right now, we call it done in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, before you're seated, I want you to take your hand and I want you to throw out some blessings across the church. Come on, take your time doing it. You, you want to be blessed, then you want to be a blessing. And I'm throwing some blessings out to those of you that are watching. Yes, I am. God bless you on this beautiful 9 a.m. hour of power. May the Lord be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a praise for our praise and worship team? Can we? We we need to do that today. I feel in my spirit we appreciate each and every one of them. And we appreciate you as well. We're coming to that point of the service today where we get that opportunity to say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you for how you took care of me. 
the last seven days. How many are thankful that the Lord watched over you? You know he did. Somebody said, well, I guess luck was on my side. I don't believe in luck. I believe in Jesus. Takes care of his people. How many thank the Lord that you had a place to sleep? Give me some loud amens. A lot of people didn't last night. How many thank the Lord you could have food to eat? Didn't have to worry about that either. A lot of folks in our community don't know where the next meal's coming from. I, I talk like this quite often just to remind us, no matter how bad it gets, count your blessings. Count your blessings because God is good. And the Lord gives us that opportunity and really commands us to show our thankfulness to Him. Somebody said, well, you know, I, I, I'm okay with that, but... I had to work extra, I had to do that. Yeah, but if it wasn't for the Lord, you and me may still be laying in the bed right now. Can't, can't move. Give me some amens. Can't walk around. I believe that we need to be thankful. It's the Lord that wakes us up in the morning, gives us health and strength to get on our way. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it's a command. It says, bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now who with says the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake he will not destroy the labor of your hands saith the Lord the word tithing means that we give God 10% of the money he helps us to make each week that leaves us 90 percent but you see 90 percent blessed goes a whole lot further than a hundred percent trying to hide it from jesus how many know when you say yes to god god will say yes to you when you say yes to the bible god's gonna bless you today can i encourage you to be faithful in your tithing and the summer of salvation is continuing. I want to just talk to you for a moment about that. I want to talk to you about something called the August Quarterly. The August Quarterly, it's one of the oldest, well, excuse me, I must correct myself. I have it right here. It is the oldest African-American festival celebrating religious freedom in the United States. Give a hand for the August quarterly. It's a powerful time of connecting people to the gospel. This regional festival is something that we are in the middle of helping to move forward. It was a great outreach last year. Let me just take a couple quick moments, if you go with me, to the August quarterly festival held there at the Tubman Garrett Riverfront Park there in Wilmington. And there was the stage and there were people beginning to come and hear the gospel music that we provided. Uh, we brought in a gospel artist, our dear friend, Brother Brian Poppin. People were uh, under the trees seated out there. Various ministers were there from churches. And there's Brian having a Holy Ghost praise, even our little darling there joining in. And then we gave an altar call. And people began to come to the crosses. Look at our workers praying with people at the cross in front of the August quarterly stage. And I'm up there preaching for a couple of minutes there. In a couple of moments, the clergy, they join me. And we begin to tell the devil, you can't have our streets. You cannot have our children. You cannot have our communities because Jesus is still the answer. That woman pointing at the cross said, that's my name when I got saved years ago. Up there with the other clergy, I think that's Bishop Aretha Morton of the wonderful Tabernacle Baptist Church. We were up there praying together, telling the city, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We're getting ready for another one coming up, the Summer of Salvation. It takes a lot of resources to continue to do that, but that is not all. What we're planning on, Brother Harmon and myself and the team is this 
One of the toughest areas of our community needs a day of the cross baptism outreach. You might say, oh, you're going to put them on a bus and bring them to the church and baptize them? No, we don't have to. We've got our own baptism that goes right out on the streets and in the community. You see, if people can't get to the church, how many believe you got to get the church to the people? Can you go out there with me for a second if they have that ready? And the power of the cross, see, right out in the community. When we did this particular event, there had just been a very serious shooting. Many got saved after the message. And so we said, if you want to get baptized, line up. I didn't think so many would want to get baptized. It got saved. But they kept coming, the young ones, the middle-aged ones, the older ones. And man, the Spirit of God was all over that park. This dear brother, my God, he had a life change in his life. And when he came up out of that water, you could feel the power of Almighty God on this man. You got to see this. Look at it. Hallelujah, he says, I'm free. I'm free. Look, he goes down for another time. He's Give the Lord a praise right now. I believe that's making Jesus happy. And I was there explaining what baptism is. Many of the folks had never been to a church. Think of that, never been to a church building. Never knew what baptism was. Who was going to tell that young lady she could get baptized? That's Bishop Mary from Philadelphia helped us that day. Even the little ones, we couldn't put them down. It was too deep, but we christened them with the cross on their little heads. Thank you, Jesus. Can I show you a couple more here? You see, Jesus loves us all the same. That dear mother, oh, she had a lot going on her plate. And this dear fella, they had to lift him down in the tank. He was so weak. But he said, I'm getting baptized. God is good. Let's put our hands together for the summer of salvation. And that's why I'm so passionate for your support today. We're asking, would you be faithful in that tithing? And those that are able, would you give your best summer of salvation offering? I still think. I want to say a shout out if you're watching to Brother Phil and Tanya Jefferson. I talked to them. Many of you know them, members of many years. He said, tell everybody hello. But the uh, reason I brought their name up, because, Phil, if you're watching, you remember all the souls that have been saved here, like Brother Charlie. How many believe, church, we can't stop? I got one more verse, and I promise I'm going to stop. St. John chapter 9, verse 4, Brother Leonard, if you have it. St. John 9, verse 4, people ask Jesus, why are you so energized about reaching out? The Son of God said these words. Here they are. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Jesus is coming soon. There's a lot of lost people outside these walls, God knows, and they need Jesus. Your help is respectfully appreciated. Before I pray, I would like to ask the ushers if they would please come at this time. And if they would march to the front rows, please, together in unity. And make sure that everyone has. Please place an envelope, ushers, in everyone's hand today. The summer of salvation must go on, but we can't do it without you. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Ushers, make sure everyone has one. And then, to those of you online, while we're doing this here in person, you can give in the following ways. You can text to give at 302-455-2820. You can also use the cash app, the dollar sign, Faith City FC2. Lower or uppercase doesn't matter. You can download the app of the church on your Apple or Android device, Faith City Family Church. You can also give online at faithcitynow.com. I'm going to pray. We need a good showing of support today. By faith, we have made these commitments to reach out. We thank you for your help. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate St. John 9, 4. 
Jesus said, the night is coming. Lord, a lot of Bible teachers believe Jesus is coming back a lot sooner than people think with what's going on in the world and around the globe. Father, we pray for a great showing of support today. Satan, we come after you as we are able in Jesus' name to win the lost. Amen and amen. Once again to all of you, thank you. We love you. God bless you. To the many of you online, thank you. We appreciate it. God bless you. to ask the ushers if they would please come together in unity and march to the front rows and just pause for prayer father in Jesus name we know that whatever leaves our hand never leaves the heart of God when we let go of what is in our hand we give our tithes and our offerings and our support for the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ something begins to happen the Lord begins to send blessings our way father we dedicate all of this today to continue not only to minister within the walls of the church and to the many online but Lord to the many who have never gone inside of a church who cannot even attend with the gospel of Jesus we dedicate it in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Ghost amen and amen ushers please take your time passing the pans as we need all of this help with these outreaches and so much going on at the church to those of you again online thank you our extended church family i like to say it like this as we bring god's house to your house ushers when you're finished simply just lay the pans on your chairs please and get ready to help me. I need to pass out one more thing, if you would. Now, coming up this Saturday, and I want to apologize to those in the church. Thank you, Brother Harmon. You said something to me. You notice there's no screens operating. Well, this one, this one went out nearly a year ago. And now this one, they're hoping to be able to revive it. Remember, I asked that we need support here. Both of these, after about 
These last about 10 years, that's the life of a projector. And it's been over 10, and they're about gone. They cost a lot of money to replace, but how many believe God's going to meet the needs? Give me some amens right now. God's done it before. That'll be the second time that we've had to do this. So just, just keep that in your prayers and in your giving. And hopefully we'll get at least the one back. That is our prayer. And I apologize to all of you present. Those of you online see it all on your screens because of the di digital delivery. But we're working on it, church. Those of you that are attending, I apologize. Ushers, would you come forward? Now, ushers, listen carefully to the pastor, what I need you to do. I need you to put at least five of these invite cards in everyone's hand because this is the last chance I have to ask you to help me invite people. Pass them out now. Would you please, ushers, aggressively, aggressively if you would, at least five in each hand. Dietrich Haddon is coming this Saturday, August the 6th. This Saturday, August the 6th at 6 p.m. Admission, admission is free. One of the greatest gospel artists of our time, Pastor Dietrich Haddon. He's coming all the way from Los Angeles, California. He'll be performing his string of gospel hits with his band Saturday, August the 6th. This Saturday, doors open at 5 p.m. We're doing this as an outreach as well, believing that many people will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Bring your family, bring your friends for Dietrich, Pastor Dietrich Haddon. Sunday, August the 28th, we'll be here before you know it. It's back to school Sunday. 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and in a portion of the service we're going to be praying for all of the youth in both services as they go back to school and the teachers plus after each service there will be backpacks at the altar of the church to bless our church families and our church students that need backpacks for going back to school give the lord a praise amen back to school sunday and then after the 11 a.m. service, there will be the free barbecue just like before a few weeks ago. It's going to be a great day. Back to school Sunday. Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. is our virtual Bible study. So praise the Lord. And I want to add one more thing. We're jumping right into the message right now. You can watch Faith City Family Church on different platforms you can watch us live 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook Live. You can now go to faithcitynow.com and watch us live as well. And then all during the week, you can revisit faithcitynow.com and see the previous week's services on there as well. I just want to keep us updated in the times that we're in that we're always available to you digitally as well. I feel strong about this message that God gave me for today. And it's going to sound like back to the basics, but that's what we need. You know, I still don't hear a whole lot of preaching about the cross. If you don't have the cross, what do you have? Without the cross, we don't have the basis of faith, salvation, healing, deliverance, miracles, breakthroughs in our lives. Our message is the power of the cross. And I'm not inferring for a second that none of us don't understand what the cross means. But I will speak only for myself. I can continue to learn more about the power of the cross and what Jesus did when he died on the cross. How many want to know all about the cross? Give me a loud amen right now as much as we possibly can. But we don't need to learn from a preacher or somebody's opinion. We need to know what the word says about the power of the cross. And I want to share today a number of things about the power of the cross now you see because of the cross first of all every one of us here today because of what Jesus did on the cross we can declare number one loudly and boldly and here it is I can overcome the challenges that I face in my life the dear man in the wheelchair hit by the car that we prayed for today the other requests that come in all of the time online 
tragedies, terrible things happening to people, people not knowing which way to turn. But the good news is this, because of the cross, because of what Jesus did, when he laid down his life, we can say, I can overcome every challenge that I face. Would you repeat this after me? Everybody say, I can overcome every challenge that I face. In John chapter 16, verse 33, we believe this because Jesus opened up his mouth and said these words, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, Jesus said, believers, you're going to have tribulation. How many could raise up your hand right now and say, I know what you're talking about, about tribulation as a child of God. In the world, you will have tribulation. But Jesus said, don't stop there. Be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. Now, why was he able to say he overcame the world? Because he knew that when he went on the cross and he would die, that he would once and for all destroy the works of the devil, and he would give us the power to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my child. Take your hands off the situation. Jesus paid the price so that we could say because of the cross I will overcome every challenge in my life if you've got a challenge right now raise up your hand and praise God that you are on your way to victory you don't hope so you're not wondering will it be okay how ridiculous you know that Jesus is greater than the drug addict greater than the addiction your child has Jesus is greater than the mess going on in your life Jesus is greater and you and I need to step up and say, devil, I know who I am today. I know what Jesus did on the cross. So you got to go in the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, not only will I overcome the challenges in my life, but secondly, it says I can live an abundant life regardless of my circumstances. I'm talking to all of us today, every single one of us here and the many of you watching right now, you have circumstances going on right now. You probably could write down five or six or seven of them, and sometimes they seem overwhelming. They seem daunting. We all know what it's like to feel the overwhelm of life, but Jesus said, don't stay there. I went to the cross. I paid a price, and I made this possible in John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus said, I want you to cheer up. I want you to get a positive attitude. Even though the thief, that's the devil, has come but for to steal from you, to kill every good thing in your life, and to destroy everything positive, Jesus said, get your focus off of that. Some Christians sometimes, they mean well but they're talking their way in the pit. You need to begin to say what God says. God says, if you're sick, let the weak say I'm strong. You need to say what God says. Let the rich, let the poor say I am rich, the Bible says. Even though we don't feel it and we don't see it, we've got to claim it. Let the church shout amen. Jesus said, because of what I did on the cross, you can know that I have come, that you might have a great life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Can I get you to say this after me? Say, because of the cross, me and my family will have an abundant life, will have a great life, and by faith, I have an abundant life. In the name of Jesus, I have everything that God says that I can have all because of the cross. Would you give the Lord a power, power praise right now? Hallelujah. We're talking about the power of the cross. Number one, because of what Jesus did on the cross, I will overcome the challenges that I face in my life. Number two, I can have an abundant life. Number three, because of what Jesus did on the cross, there is someone there is someone who will always listen. 
So many people are depressed. Therapists are booked up. They say many times, weeks and months in advance. People are still afraid. People are watching the news and hearing the outbreaks of the monkey pox here and this, this uh, new uh, virus over here and this variation of that over yet there. And people are many times at an all-time low of fear and depression. But praise God when that tries to come on you. Listen, you got somebody to talk to. Let the church say amen. You got somebody you can cast your care on. Let the church shout. Praise the Lord right now. And his name is Jesus. David said in Psalm chapter 3, verse number 4, these powerful words in the scripture psalm chapter 3 verse number 4 david is talking about he's saying i reached out and i cried and the lord heard me he said i cried unto the lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. Sometimes we cry and nothing changes. Sometimes we cry out and it only gets worse. But the good news is this. We don't go by feeling. We don't go by what we see. But we go by what God says. Let the church shout amen. And sometimes when it's at its worst, that's when God is at his greatest. And something is about to happen good in your life. Give the Lord a shout right now. Oh, I love this next verse in Jeremiah. It's the 33rd chapter and the third verse. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I think of the seasons in my life Maybe I could have done better if I would have just called on the Lord. But what did I do? I had some bad habits. I would try to handle it myself. I would, you know, try to call everybody else first. But how many know your Savior, what he did on the cross? Because he's afraid that when you walk around with an air of confidence, with a vibe of holy confidence that God is going to put you in the path of other people that are sharing that same confidence. Do you know that confident people draw other confident people? It's called the law of attraction. Uh, liars attract other liars, uh, and thieves attract other thieves. Uh, but people who walk around with, I know who I am. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a child of God, and I am worth great value to God. I am blessed doesn't matter what I have or I don't have. I know that I am blessed. I am somebody. And even though maybe they've changed this at work or I've been laid off or things are changing radically in my life, that has nothing to do with who I am in Jesus Christ. I am a overcoming victor. Somebody give the Lord a shout right now. I am an overcoming coming conqueror. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of a reward. At your lowest that's when God is his strongest. At your weakest, that's when God is about to do something that's going to blow your mind because when you are weak, that's when you really got to lean on Jesus. And I've learned like that old gospel song says, I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Why? I'm finding more power than I've ever dreamed. I am learning to lean on my Jesus. Jesus. Uh, somebody ought to get excited. If you're in a valley, get excited. If the devil's been attacking, get excited because God is on the throne. He's about to show up and you're about to get a miracle turnaround. Let somebody shout, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. One more thing I want to share in this message is this. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, as our musicians are coming, you can say this with me. I don't have to live in the condition of worry and anxiety. Is that not good news? You know how many people are living in the current condition of worry and anxiety? That anxiety is making their blood pressure go up. 
It's messing with their sugar problem. Their health is being negatively impacted because they have not turned it over to Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, oh, think about this, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Somebody said, I can't seem to get rid of this worry. I can't seem to get rid of this anxiety. I have a scriptural prescription for you out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, be careful for nothing. Don't, don't stress yourself out, but in everything by prayer and seeking God with a thankful heart. Let your request be made known unto God. If you'll try it, you'll eventually get to the outcome. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Oh, think about this. Let's review every single, single, single thing we said. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, first of all, I will overcome the challenges that I face in my life. Secondly, because of what Jesus did on the cross, I can live an abundant life regardless of my circumstances. Thirdly, there is someone who will always listen. Fourthly, I can have a place of refuge, a place to go. Fifthly, I can live a lifestyle of having confidence and thank God, number six, we said, I don't have to live in the condition of worry and anxiety. Can we all stand together, beloved, in the house of the Lord? And those of you that are watching, we want to have a prayer right now that you can live in the realm of the miraculous, of the victorious, in the name of Jesus. And I want to say this over you. Would you stretch your hands out to me, dear ones in the church, dear ones watching right now, our extended family? I want you to declare this with me right now. And I want you to say it with boldness there in the living room, here in the sanctuary, there in your bedroom, in the kitchen. I want you to say this boldly. Are you ready? Come on, say it boldly with me. Help me, Josh, a little bit if you would. Come on, everybody, say. Say, because of what Jesus did on the cross, I decree and declare that I am a conqueror. I am victorious. I am never the victim. I am never the victim, but I am the overcomer. And in the name of Jesus, I will have the blessings God says I can have physically, emotionally, family, financially, in every dimension, all because of what Jesus did on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a praise? Oh, praise him. Praise him about 20 more seconds here. Because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for being a part of the Hour of Power.